They say time really flies when you're having fun, and I honestly think that's true because it's already been over a year with Casper. My 2013 Volvo S60 T6 R design. I've been through a lot, done a lot since the last update video. So let's get into everything that I've done to my S60 and what's gone wrong. If you don't know me, I'm Burn, and this is my 2013 S60 T6R design, which I got on Valentine's Day last year. I paid $8,000 for this car, and I've been in love with it ever since I've gotten it. It's an ice white, and it has almost every option except the radar adaptive cruise control and the front camera. But honestly, those two things, I'm okay without them. So I wanna go over my likes and dislikes of my S60 over the past year because I've gone on plenty of road trips, done a lot of adventures in the snow, all four seasons, and I've accumulated a few things. Honestly, I love the car, so any dislike that I may talk about really is menial. The first thing that I wanna talk about is, well, something that I like is the engine. This car has the three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder engine, and it makes 330 horsepower and 354 pound feet of torque. It's honestly a great engine. It uses a twin scroll turbo, so torque is almost instant. As soon as it shifts down, you just go. It accelerates like a rocket. but I'm really happy that I got the T6. I actually drove a T5 for two or three days and it wasn't slow and it wasn't bad. I love the five cylinder engine, but it was boring compared to this engine. This engine has a lot of thrust and kick it and it's just violent with its acceleration compared to the T5. I'm definitely not knocking down a T5 if you're looking at one. Like I said, it's an excellent engine. It's okay on gas mileage. It's 250 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. It's a torquey motor. The thing pulls. And you can make it even faster. There's a bunch of tunes and all kinds of mods for them. <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about is the handling. This car feels very nimble around corners when you're really flying. I do have to say that when you're in sport mode, which is what I usually use when I'm carving corners, throttle tipping is a little bit too sharp, so you have to get used to it at first. And also, I wish Volvo put stiffer sway bars in from the factory. I actually still plan on getting the IPD sway bars in the future to stiffen the chassis up because when you're going around some corners, it kind of feels just a little bit twitchy. So you have to kind of learn how to use the car. But the torque vectoring works really well. The next like I want to talk about is comfort. I drove this car from Maryland to Florida and Florida to Maryland, and I had no problems, not in the same day, but I drove this car 13 hours, 900 miles. This was one of the few cars that I've driven long distance that I've had no back problems. I wasn't sore, nothing. You know, of course, when you're sitting down for a while, you have to stretch, but it's really comfortable. I do want to say that the T5 seats are a little bit more soft and comfortable than the R design seats. I still prefer these seats because they hug you a little bit more than the T5, but all Volvos of this era have such comfortable seats. I also appreciate the amount of technology that's in this car. The newer Volvos have too much for me. I don't really want that much technology, especially that big screen that can go bad. I do wish that it had Apple CarPlay. That's the only thing. And there is an upgrade to get a new head unit, but it 
kind of looks a little bit out of place in the car so it's something i'm still thinking about it's also like six or seven hundred bucks so that's something that i do later on down the line now there's only three things that i not really dislike but i've had an issue with the first thing is the smart key access with the door handles they don't work i complained about it last year and there is a fix to it which i asked a friend of mine which is a service advisor at a Volvo dealership and he said it's kind of an expensive fix. There is a smaller fix if you take off the door handles and clean the contacts which I tried to do and it did work so I might try to do it again. One daily annoyance, the, the car decides to do it every once in a while. It doesn't like to connect with Bluetooth quickly every time. Sometimes I have to shut the head unit off or restart my phone for it to connect. I don't know, it's just minor little things. And then the last thing which I kind of already mentioned was the lack of options if you wanna add Apple CarPlay, cause it's not a touch screen head unit in the car now and it doesn't support some of the colors that CarPlay uses. So I, you have to replace it. And like all of my other update videos, which I say every time, how has an almost 10 year old Volvo held up in my year of ownership with it. Has anything gone wrong? Has having an old Swedish car with a turbo and a bunch of electronic nannies been a bad experience? I'm gonna let you think the answer before I tell you. No, I've really had nothing mechanical go wrong with this car. And any of the electrical issues that I've had are very minor and there's fixes to them. The last electrical issue I want to talk about is the backup camera. That still, when it's really hot, like today, it's like 90 degrees today, it just goes blue. So I've gotten used to it, but I still want to fix it because it's annoying. But under the hood, this is a three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder engine, 330 horsepower, 354 pound feet of torque, paired to a six-speed automatic and Haldex Generation 4. That's Volvo's all-wheel drive system. That whole combination works really well. I just wish this car had paddle shifters or a better way to control the transmission. If these came with a manual transmission, boy, it would be a fast and fun car. I wish they still did that, like the old S60Rs. I had one of those. Right now, since it's been warm, I usually see 20 average. That's city and highway. When it's colder outside, in the wintertime, this was my first real long winter with the car, I was getting like 16. So it was a pretty big difference. I do have an oil leak on this, which has been annoying. It doesn't leak a lot. And at first I thought it was the drain plug, but that's not what it is because I just changed the oil a few months ago and I am dreading that I know what it is and I think it's the rear main seal. Um, luckily, when it's warmer, I don't notice it leaking terribly. So I just check the oil like once every week or two. I plasti dipped my wheels in gunmetal, just like my XC90. I'm saving up for the Polestar aftermarket wheels. I want either the winter wheels or I saw some on eBay which look really nice but they're 1200 bucks. That's something. I'm still on my snow tires. They're the Nexon Wind Guard. They were really great in the snow. I did a lot. I drove this car all winter. So the last time I talked with you guys about Casper, I complained about the Borla muffler that I put on it being too quiet. So I straight piped it and then it was too loud. Here we go. 
So I got a Magnaflow muffler, well, Magnaflow resonator, and I put that on it, and then it hushed it down. There is drone, it's kind of tolerable. It's tolerable for me because I've had loud cars in the past. That also reminds me of something under the hood. I got a cold air intake on the car. I put it on. I got it from someone in an S60 group on Facebook and I ran it for a month and it sounded great. You could hear all the turbo noises. I loved it and it cracked. I think it cracked from the heat because all of a sudden one day I did a pull and I got a check engine light and I was like, oh God, no. So I popped the hood and then I saw the intake tube cracked. He said it was defective, so he's sending me a new one, so that's good. I never talked about it in the first video of this car, but there are a few cars that I looked at before getting this one, and I wrote those down on my phone too. So I was also looking at a P3 S80. I think I was leaning towards a T6 over a V8, but either one would be fine. I was looking at the T6s because I wanted the refreshed models. I was also looking at the Audi S4. I think the B7 or the B8. Another one that goes directly against this one and the S4 is the BMW 335i. That would have been an F80. I also almost got a 535i wagon. Uh, it had a blue exterior and a brown interior. That's like my dream color combo. One car that was neck on neck with me getting either this or the other one was the fourth gen Acura TL, preferably a 2012 to 2014 after they kind of fixed the nose on it. But after I found out that the fourth gen TLs were 4,000 pounds, which is a whole 200 some pounds heavier than this car. This car is already heavy enough. The last car I was looking at was the Lexus GS350, which was also a close contender between this, the TL, but uh, all of them were a little bit more expensive and because European cars tend to depreciate better or more than Japanese cars or others, I was able to get this for a steal. So here we have a tour on Miss Casper. There's a few things on the body that I want to mention. The first thing which is really annoying, this happened the last time I changed my oil. I used ramps and I scuffed the bottom of the bumper, so I'm going to have to get that touched up. I do want to get the bumper repainted because there's a lot of little chips in it from before me, but that's something I want to do. And then I put paint protection film on the front, probably on the hood and the front fenders too, and the mirror caps just to be safe. But here is an up close on the wheels. I'm generally happy with how it turned out. This is not a permanent... Uh, solution to changing up your wheels but it did it does add something it just makes the car look a little darker I was gonna go with black but it was impossible to find gloss black dip at any advanced auto near me so I just was like eh, the gunmetal is free so I'll just go with that I got my first Dean and it was from where's my it's here from a shopping cart, you can probably, oh, there you can see it. But I was in the car and then all of a sudden it was, it was really windy and rainy. All of a sudden I hear a thunk and I was like, oh God, a car hit me. And then it was a shopping cart. I keep my interior pretty clean. I am currently at, see here, 122,515 miles. And on that note, I don't think I have anything else to add. So thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about the P3S60. And for people that have them, how have you liked yours over the past however long you've had it? 
because I've been happy with mine and I definitely see a future with Casper and I'm excited to see her evolve into kind of what I dream to see her as. So thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next video, which will be actually very soon, sooner than normal, because I'm doing this full time now. So I have more time for more fun adventures and all kinds of things like that. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye peeps. In love I know, but not with me. You love my seventh.